welcome back to our series of videos on workflows for building products, anything that goes in or on a building. In this case, we're looking at a workflow for receiving a Revit model, applying a bit of cladding to it inside Inventor, and using some of the nice tricks inside Inventor 2017 to speed that up a bit. In this case, we've got a, um, a sort of area the architects defined for receiving a bit of cladding on the back here, the Revit model. They want a random pattern of sort of dimples on this cladding. So none of these cladding panels are really going to be the same. So we're going to look at a, a tool that's been invented for a few years now called iCopy for this. And also a tool in Inventor 2017, which is patterning features by sketch points. And because it's a sheet metal part as well that we're going to be using for the cladding, um, there might be some uh, useful tools along the, uh, uh, the new sheet metal stuff in Inventor 2017 as well. So um, we start out in Revit. I'm not going to bore you with uh, simplifying this model in Revit now, but what I've done is I've used these uh, hide and isolate uh, tools down here in Revit to create a new 3D view, which is just the stuff that I actually want to see. So in this case, I've removed all the other, all the other, you know, the parts of the model, the other side uh, of the building that I don't really care about. And uh, save this Revit file. There's my 3D view called Inventor. And I'll now close um, Revit. And I'm going to hit file open inside Inventor 2017, find that Revit file hit open and wait for it to load. Now, this is going to, the reason I simplified it a bit in Revit um, first and created a new 3D view is because if I hadn't done that, I would have had about, I think, 2,000 solid bodies to bring in here, um, which is not ideal from Inventor's point of view. So a bit of simplification, in fact, just two, two minutes work in Revit lets me get it down to about 400 solid bodies. So I'm just going to say I want a multi-body part, pick the right 3D view here, I just created and say OK, and that should then bring in those 400 or so solid bodies for me. OK, so it's nice and quick now. Just going to get rid of this uh, translation report. I really need that. And I'm going to copy um, this file. So I'm going to right click here, copy and paste it into an empty assembly file that's just waiting for a bit of Revit action. So I've got, uh, I've got my Revit model here ready to reference and now I need a bit of cladding with random dimples on it that can stretch to fit all of these rectangular slots that we have available for it. So um, here's the start panel in Inventor, just a standard sheet metal part that I can flat pattern. So here's a flat pattern for it um, and I want to, as I say, get these, uh, these dimples in here. So um, I'm going to draw those from scratch um, so I'm going to start a new plane and um, I'm actually going to sketch these um, as standard features. Now, it, with all that long-winded description I just gave you of what the architect wants with the dimples, you know, randomly spaced and all that, um, an experienced inventor designer would uh, get a light bulb appear in their head and they'd be thinking about eye features and sheet metal punch tools because those innate uh, do allow you to place them on sketch um, points, uh, on multiple sketch points as well, especially for sheet metal punch tools. Um, however, an experienced inventor designer will also know that it takes more than a few minutes to publish uh, anything but the simplest of sheet metal punch tools or eye features. And let's just say we're a bit pushed for time for this job. So we, we can take advantage of the new sketch driven pattern tool in Inventor 2017 to avoid publishing an eye feature or sheet metal punch tool altogether. Um, and that's exactly what we're going to do. Save a bit of time. So I'm going to, uh, without any more ado, I'm going to start sketching um, this, um, this dimple that we want to create. So um, I need an offset first, an offset plane to sketch on. So I'll offset that by 250 mil. Um, and then I can start sketching on this plane. And then I've got a point in uh, the model already that I want to use for the center point, and that's actually up here. So I'm just going to project that into my sketch, and now I can start drawing over the top of it. So I'm going to use the circle tool. Um, not sure exactly what the size of this I want it to be right now, but let's just go with um, I don't know 480 for now. We'll see how this looks in a minute. I want a line that goes across the top there, and I want to trim this. And I want to offset that. 
Uh, this should become clear in a minute, hopefully, what I'm doing. And I should have dimensioned that as I was drawing, but here we go. I'm offsetting that by a value called thickness. And then I'm going to extend that line and that line and also fully constrain this. You can see it's not fully constrained here. So I'm going to use my coincident constraint and my sketch is now fully constrained. So uh, if I finish this sketch, what I want to do now is to get that dimple in the sheet metal part. So I'm not saying this is necessarily the best way of doing it, but it's a nice quick way. Um, and uh, it shouldn't give us too much grief, hopefully. So if I choose all of those, uh, um, both of those profiles, and I ex uh, do a revolution as a cut here, I'm going to chop myself a hole in there in the part. Okay, so I've got a hole in the part and now I need that dimple coming through there. So I'm going to use the same sketch. So let's just make that sketch visible. And this time I'm going to revolve just this profile here around the same axis. And um, revolve it as a, as a join and say OK. Oops. What have I done that's stupid there? Ah! Now this this is good. I wanted this to happen. Honest, we've uh, we've now got an error with our flat pattern. Okay, so I'm going to say edit, um, and I'm going to cancel that. Why did we get an error? Well, we're creating features here that clearly can't be flat patterned. A big sphere like that, and that can be. It has been traditionally an inventor a bit of a nightmare for sheet metal. It's constantly the flat pattern as you're making edit edits. It's kicking up a fuss saying, oh, you can't flat pattern this. You can't flat pattern that. And um, we just basically want to work without the problem of that. So what's really nice here in Inventor 2017 is I can right click on flat pattern and say defer update. OK, so if I do that and now if I try the thing I was trying to do before, um, choose, a, choose the axis from a revolution and just say OK. Now my flat pattern has no issues. It does have a lightning bolt by it and it does know that it's still deferred. The update is still deferred. Um, if I click on it to activate it, I think it will update it then, but uh, I'm not going to do that because right now it's not going to like it. So uh, I'm going to create a plane here to do a bit of sculpting and I'm going to use the sculpt tool up here and uh, choose this surface and choose which bit I want to uh, sculpt away, which is that bit there and cut. And say OK. So there we've got a, a sort of a, a dimple through the model as you can see and I just I might as well finish the job here and get a fillet on back there so I'll make this fillet and then 20 mil and I'll put the fillet on this side which is going to be 20 plus thickness I guess Right, happy days. So we've got a feature in there a lot quicker than we could have created an eye feature or sheet metal punch tool to do the same thing um, and we can place it on multiple sketch points as we know in Inventor 2017. So let's just turn off the visibility using the V shortcut, the white mouse button V, uh, and we are good to go. So next thing that I want us to do, if I just save this part, is I've got a sketch in here already called Edit Dimple Positions, and I bought that center point in there in projected it in a minute ago. So if I just edit this sketch, all it is is just a point and some dotted lines showing me, you know, my extents of where I can put these dimples. And all I need to do is just stick, stick some random points in here. I would dimension these, of course, but I'm not going to bother now. Um, and then I'll finish sketch. And um, then I'm going to use my sketch driven pattern. So I'm going to uh, bring that up. And here's the thing where I just need to make sure I pick all the features that I want to pattern. So they're all features here. Um, all these four or five features go up to make that um, dimple and I'm going to choose placement by a sketch, by that sketch there. don't think the sketch even needs to be visible which is nice, you see it's not actually visible here. Um, and I just need to make sure my base point is correct which is going to be that point on the sketch there. Although it doesn't seem to be letting me actually pick that.
It's a bit annoying. Maybe I do need to make this sketch visible. So let's turn on the visibility of the sketch first. Let's try that again. So um, it's, oh, it's found the sketch automatically now for me, which is a good sign. And I'll pick the features that I want to uh, to pattern. And this time base point, there we are. So that's what I want. I need to make sure the base point is the original point on the sketch. And I've got a preview of all those uh, features going in. And I can just say OK to that. And it's patterned the parts by the sketch. So this is all well and good. It's pretty good. If I edit that uh, edit dimple position sketch now and either remove points or put more points in, let's hit F7 to actually be able to see what we're doing. Remove points or put more points in or move things around. And if I finish the sketch, then it updates. I've got some overlapping things there. Of course that was going to happen, so let's move that down a bit. Right, okay, so it's all looking pretty good. I'm going to save this part. Now what I want to show you next is uh, how we can start placing these on the Revit building. I'm not going to walk you through step by step how you actually publish uh, you know, a bit of cladding like this or whatever really in Inventor as an iCopy template that enables you to stretch it and place it on a building. There's uh, plenty of good articles online that will show you how to do that. I'm just going to show you the end result um, to sort of complete the workflow here. Okay, so I'm going to close this part and let's head back to our building. So um, we've got a ready done one here. So I'm going to go back to the uh, symbol tab. I'm going to say I want to use the iCopy tool. In fact, I'm, because I'm going to be using it a bit, I'm going to add it to the main panel here. So I don't need to keep hitting the down button. I'll save this assembly. Um, for the Revit model. So I'll save the Revit model as well. And now I am Let's cancel that and show that again now. So I'm going to hit the iCopy tool up here and I just pick the um, iCopy template that I want to use. So this is the same panel that I just created having been published as an iCopy template. So I'm going to select that iCopy template. And now what I need to do is to pick the points where I'm going to attach it to the building. So let's try this one first. So in this case, I have three points that I need to use to define it. And then I say OK. And there's a bit of naming in there. We won't worry about that right now. You can name it with prefixes and suffixes. I'll just say OK. And there's my panel in there now. So I'm going to place a few of these. Um, I'm going to hit the space bar to repeat the command. Let's bring up my template. And let's chuck in another panel down here. three points to pick bottom left bottom right and top right and click OK click next next and there's my second panel in there so I'm going to hit spacebar to repeat this command let's get a third one in here while we can let's try and make sure I pick the right uh, points here Okay, and just while we're here, let's get one or two on the other um, on the other wall as well. I won't show you the whole thing. Captivated though you doubtless are. Okay, there's another one, and I'll just do one more. There we are, happy days. Okay, so this is great, except we don't have a random pattern of dimples on these. Now, I could have included that in the iCopy part, but I have decided we it's going to be really easy for us to just double click on each of these panels that we've created, double click on it twice, find that edit dimple bit positions sketch, double click on it, um, hit F7, stick some points in there. So that will do me for that one. Finish that sketch and pow, there's my points. And then I'm going to hit return up to the top level assembly again. 
double click on this one, double click on the panel itself. Find the sketch, stick some more points in there, hit F7 to actually section the sketch properly. Have a few more in this one. Finish that sketch and we've got all the dimples in this one as well. Hit return, return again, and so on and so forth. So you can see, hopefully, pretty quick it should be to uh, go through and get a whole random load of dimples. A very happy architect. Wonderful. So the last thing I haven't done, actually, if I head back to my start panel, is I left that flat pattern deferred, didn't I, with the updates. So you see if I try to open that again now, Inventor's being friendly, it's telling me that the flat pattern is not current in this document. So I'm going to say OK, and then all I have to do is to right click, untick defer update, and now because I did a nice sculpt on that, I've got no issues with my flat pattern actually. If I hit go to flat pattern, flat pattern's all functional there, and I've just got my dimples still um, flattened there. So there you have it. That is iCopy and Inventor, um, teamed up with some patterning of features by sketch points and also deferring the flat pattern to boot. Hope you enjoyed it. Thanks very much.